2019. And the first thing I saw when I was on the shelf was pre prohibition style lager. That's before I saw what that was called or who made it. So it was just, but I gave it a chance because Coors was made by prohibition prohibition. According to Dwight Schrute on The Office, Adolf Coors was a moonshiner who stabbed his grandma. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. I don't remember the legend. Uh, yeah, me either. <laughs> Maybe it was Buckshot. Anyway, I decided I, I'm a big fan of the Prohibition era, just in, in, in general. It's a fun time in history, the moonshine. So, I, so that's why I picked up a Coors product, and it's pretty nice. good. I'll admit it. Wow. Marco. I think that's the most hipster beer that Matt will drink. No, has, dude, dude you I don't even has, think of it he, as he didn't, No, see, he didn't talk about the other beer he brought with him. Because oh, that I haven't one, had that yet. Curious. That'll that probably one, be on the next episode because yeah. I haven't tried that yet. Okay. So we'll just hold that one. Yeah. He also rides <laughs> fixie bikes and has a handlebar mustache. Now. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. My handlebar mustache might come back this year. Okay. Right. I think I technically have a handlebar mustache. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Mine but I don't only have the handlebar mustache. It's a churro stout from <laughs> Cerveceria, Colorado. You were just enraged by this product. We did, a minute we did ago. some research, and it, it's a parent company. Its parent company is Denver Beer Co. I don't understand why that you just couldn't say Denver Beer Co. Wait, what? Um, but it's a churro they, stout. Denver <laughs> Beer Co. in Spanish translates to Denver Beer Co. <laughs> so, uh, Which is I, not the same as Cerveceria <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> so you think you're supporting your Mexican heritage, and instead you're just supporting Colorado. Damn it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you're not even going to challenge the Mexican heritage. Way to turn on the Philippines, Marco. Uh, they're all Spaniards. <laughs> they're all Spaniards. <laughs> I've known many of Filipinos that reject the idea the that Spanish they might we be have, called we have reclaimed, Latino. We have reclaimed oh, oh. the term sea Mexican, which used to be <laughs> a slur, but now we have reclaimed it. Look at us, progressive podcast. <laughs> Tammy. Wait, wait, wait. No. Beside, hold on though. You didn't actually <laughs> talk about the beer. It's a graham cracker, or not graham cracker stuff. <laughs> it is the, the uh, more ethnic version of that, which is a churro stout. Okay. So do you like it or not? Let's let's have our taste. <laughs> Breaking news. It's decent. Well, oh, decent. is it graham cra- cracker adjacent? On a I level of not the that bad. The graham cracker better. Oh, the, that is okay. Denver Beer Co.'s flagship product, I believe. The graham cracker for people beer. out of state. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Tam <laughs> did not switch the it berry up. Berry <laughs> seltzer beer. <laughs> the berry seltzer beer. I still object to the phrase seltzer beer. Yeah, because she just made that up just now. Yeah, because one's a seltzer and the other's a beer, and by definition. And and yeah, that's. But they're both alcohol. It's like saying this is my cat dog. <laughs> that's why they're I went out and, pet. and bought beer because I didn't want to be sipping cognac for a beer <laughs> podcast. Tammy is a terrible. You could have been, but I don't think you would have been driving. Very she does far. not provide us with appropriate beer. Uh, Thanksgiving, I had to go seltzer. Uh well yeah but I it's mean, brewed like a beer. It is. It's brewed in beer stuff. We <laughs> we brew it like a beer. I it mean, comes out of the keg. All alcohol hey. is technically brewed like a beer. If you you simplify you it down it, that way, it's, it's all fermented it's from some natural source. You know sugar. What, Tammy? In this case, but it's sugar. You know, Tammy, the liquid coming out of the sewage pipes. <laughs> it's kind of like rain. <laughs> Followed the same path as the rain. <laughs> Does it have carbonation? <laughs> depends on, Sometimes. Depends you on how close to yeah. under Denver Beer Co. you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, nice turn. <laughs> I like it. Um, I have the air horn sound effect. Oh, wah, I, wah, wah. I, I need you to update my iPad boss jock. Yep. I'm going to have to do it. You know what? I might have to give you the uh, the controls to do the drops. You talk Possibly, about the drops. Yeah. I, can, I can get... We have a cord It's the radio enough. background. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the drop and there's yeah. no drop. <laughs> yeah, after the last podcast, right? <laughs> just going to have okay. to Jones from Police Academy it. <laughs> Michael Winslow it. Michael Winslow. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah. Uh, speaking of, of TV like stuff, that was the topic this week uh, TV shows. And I, I kind of, I mean, that's such a vague thing. So what I had done for me is I kind of broke it down into a few categories. So top TV shows, these, to me, the way I did it were these, I just picked five, the top five that came to me 
without really having to think. Anything after these five shows, I had to start thinking about where would I put this show? It Does it fall in and beat out any of the other top five? Then I chose Classic. So that would kind of be like your um, one of mine. I'll, I'll just give it away is, is Quantum Leap. So it might be something that you kind of grew up with that is now a classic that you'd go back and watch, but maybe not religiously like you would some of these other shows. And then I said it before when we picked the categories, animation I hold totally different. So best animation. And so I, I picked, I, I got a five on each category, but um, my first show that came to my mind was Boston Legal. <laughs> I've heard you talk about that show. I've never I have seen that it. one too on my list. Did you? Check. <laughs> uh, um, I, this was, I, I, we caught on to the actual episode when it was new and fresh right at the end. Like season five was its last year. And I want to say, oh God, it's, there's a box set over there somewhere, but I want to say it was like ABC or whatever, one of the bigger networks it was on. And Aaron Sorkin wrote it. I never it. watched it on TV, though. Well, this is because by the time we started catching it, I've it was... I've only watched it on DVD. Well, well because there, there, there's some bad blood between the show's writers, creators, and whatnot, and the networks. And that's why it's really hard to find on streaming bits and stuff like that. There's, there's something going on with Aaron Sorkin and, and his writers and whatnot and how they feel about that show and the it's networks. It's actually uh, surprisingly common. <laughs> Because uh, recently Chappelle pulled Chappelle show off of Comedy Central. Pretty much everything, I oh. think. Did he? Because I think he only recently got the rights back or something like that. Hmm. Or it's something to do with his Netflix contract. But um, he had Netflix pull Chappelle show off of Netflix, at least. That's the whole reason I got Netflix in oh, like 2010, no. my friend. I already told you before, I realized that it was a streaming service now. And that intrigued me, but what she was streaming was the Chappelle show. Ah. And I'm like, you can just have Chappelle show anytime you want. And I signed <laughs> up that same well, day. Well, he thinks of his stand up as like his main art, it's kind of like his primary art. So mm-hmm. I can kind of understand that as like a person who has dabbled in artistic endeavors. <laughs> um, he just had bad blood when he left Chappelle show. So. He didn't yeah. like the direction. Did you do like point. rhythm gymnastics or something? Me? Yeah. I don't know. That's I mean, all, that's I, what I thought of when you said other artistic endeavors. I mean, I try to write, but I'm not that great of a writer. <laughs> to be honest. I, I feel you know it. what? I'm a pretty Kinda decent there. writer and I just don't want to be a writer. <laughs> Most of the time when I write something, I'm like, God damn it, I guess I'm a writer. It's not an appealing pastime to me. I, I think... But I know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like I was always good at it. And I used to play an instrument. That I can't do. Yeah, it's same. Terrible. But when you Drums. start to like monetize or like do it at a high level, you get sick of it. And that's why I quit playing an instrument. I did that with soccer for a bit. So I can kind of understand, long story short, I can understand <laughs> where Chappelle is coming from as far as being sick of the Chappelle show and kind of taking it, his ball home with him and being like, well, I'm going to pull this off. Does anybody have Chappelle show on their yeah, list? Yeah, Mark, I'm going to I'm gonna salvage <laughs> your wild tangent and just say the Chappelle show was awesome. And I definitely, uh, I'll put it on my list. Sure, just to make it relevant. It was a <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> show. Oh my God. There's some good that, stuff. That Sesame Street like, STD skit is <laughs> hilarious. I've uh, never see, seen it. I didn't see it. And I was going to say, I haven't oh seen enough God. of Chappelle's show to like say. <laughs> I have not seen much better than that when he did a Sesame Street <laughs> where all the puppets had an STD. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man. See, even oh just you saying that, that the, makes me want to go look it up. That and the blind cl- black Klansman. Uh, <laughs> I, some, I have seen that one. There are some absolute moments of genius on that show. Hold up. <laughs> so the thing about Chappelle's show, which I hope this doesn't turn into a trend with some of our favorite shows, is it doesn't seem to be, or there didn't seem to be a amicable end to the series or, or yeah, true. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of starting <laughs> to think about as you guys are talking about it and 
made, you know, with Boston Legal, it, it, and even with one of my other ones I'll mention later, like it, the, there's always an end to these shows. And in, in, in most cases, I, I feel like it might not always be good. But uh, did you, what, what well, would be on yours before Chappelle's show? Well, first, let me just say that may be a really good reason to adopt the English model of having a planned run. Yeah. What Netflix calls a limited run series, which they're starting to do more of. It's only going to last this long and then it's going to end. Natural death. Because when they make it go 11 years, Married with Children happens. And that's one <laughs> of my shows. Married with Children is one of my favorite shows up until about, I don't know, the invention of No Man. Uh-huh. And then I cannot stand it anymore. <laughs> but it gets to the point where these shows, which were once great, just become ridiculous. Because they have no ending in mind. The Simpsons is another one I loved. I grew up on it. It was the most amazing thing in the world until it became ridiculous. And I can't hardly watch it anymore. But for like 13 years, it was the best show. And that's a really, really good run. But there were several times where even the creators thought or the writers thought it was going to end. And it just wouldn't die. (laughs) <laughs> it kept making money, and now it's in like 31 seasons, and it is unwatchable. In a theme it's park. crap. Oh, I've never been, but I want to go. Yeah. Okay. But I can't stand to <laughs> through any new episodes. Yeah, I view it the way a lot of fans view it, whereas The Simpsons is almost like three different shows. It is. And some, and some people break it down by like who were the writers on the show, too. Everyone wow. tries to figure out what was the catalyst. What was it that made it change? But there are also like some Simpsons fans that like hate episodes that I love. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm having the same per- same boat. The Armin Tanzarian, apparently that's a hated episode, but I thought that was pretty pretty damn good. When I'm... Principal Skinner was not Principal Skinner, but oh, Armin man. Tanzarian. I wish I could like relate and talk to you about this show, <laughs> but I no, I I remember th- that weirdly... episode. Yeah, <laughs> apparently that wasn't considered. Is not considered a great episode, but I love it. But I also realized that I do like a lot of the Conan episodes when he was on the writing staff, and it kind of made me realize how much I just like Conan, like (laughs) as as a comedy writer. And he was a writer on SNL too, and head writer on SNL. He was the Tina Fey of his day. And it kind of like there's some intersections where I'm like, damn, I'm a Conan O'Brien fan because I like a lot of the work he's done. Conan O'Brien has specifically never heard of this podcast, but his podcast is really, really good. If you want to hear him just kind of having fun with a guest, just off the cuff, he is every bit as funny <laughs> as he is when he plans it. But he is just the quickest mind. He, he is a comedy god, absolutely. That's awesome. He's That's great at interviewing awesome. people, and he is hilarious. The way he can twist things with just seamlessly is, is just enviable. He, he, Absolutely. It just shows that he's always thinking. I yeah. think the Simpsons should he's definitely brilliant. be up there though, even though it kind of jumped the shark. Well, I had a feeling it was going to be on that. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. yeah. Cause also it, I do quote the, it a lot. The Simpsons <laughs> has also gotten a second life in meme culture. It's like a lot of yes. Simpsons references like steamed hams has become steamed a, hams a, is a, a big meme <laughs> <laughs> lately. Steamed hams is like a big famous blog now, I think, about a hamburger chef started called Steamed Hams. Holy shit. Yeah, I just... So I just follows. random Simpsons gags have like gotten a second life of their, their own. Yeah, and go back to the Armin Tanzarian episode. I, me and my son say that line a lot. Under penalty of torture. Mm. <laughs> That's the... Like, no one will ever talk of this again under penalty of torture. That's how they got around this storyline becoming canon. Which is really clever because they will do that every now and then. They'll just have a ridiculous ending that makes everything kind of reset back to where it was before. And at uh, and other times they will build an entire universe that actually has a continuity through it up until about 13 years in. <laughs> That's also why there's a lot of debate among Simpsons fans. Is they're like, well, this isn't actually canon, yada, yada, yeah. yada. The treehouses of horror are know not to be canon. They can do whatever they want in those. I missed a lot of The Simpsons. Yeah, b- believe it or I not. I started like, it, and oh. then I don't know. I'm a little older, I think. I was I'm 11 when it started. When, and so um, I might so have been 
where I missed a couple years of it. So there's some episodes I'm like, I don't remember that. But well, I was a huge fan. <laughs> My mom was not. And that's why I have no reference to The Simpsons because it was one of those shows where if you my mom heard... You have a where there's only one TV, though. Well, and that's just it. I grew up with one TV in the house. It was kind of up in the loft. My parents didn't want it in the living room or anything like that. My mom had... And you call that a living room? <laughs> You couldn't go to another room and watch TV? Was, it, you should have told her in 30 years, I'm not going to be able to relate to my friends, Ma. Well, right? Like, there was, just, my mom had her theories on TV, and she was so anti, anti-TV in a lot of ways, yet unless it came to her shows. So there were certain shows we grew up on. Did she call it an idiot that, box? I, yeah. Did she use that term? Yeah, okay. I think I, I, can, I can honestly recall hearing <laughs> idiot box, but... If she had heard uh, The Simpsons or another one that is on my list, uh, Dukes of Hazard, <laughs> she would fucking flip. Like you could hear her scream or stomp I would think halfway like across the house. Turn that shit off! It just gets okay. <laughs> turn this. I would watch back to freaking Clifford the Red Dog and shit. Oh like, my god, we, we couldn't like. The my Simpsons mom was, were not allowed. My mom was household. so disinterested in what I watched that I would watch Coming to America at full volume. <laughs> Sam Jackson, who the fuck is this asshole? <laughs> and she was just in the next room. She didn't care. Oh, man. <laughs> I wish I but had But the that Simpsons mom. didn't make my mom's radar. Yeah, I think that's funny. why I became such a Simpsons fan because my household was like Brendan. But it was like a guilty pleasure for me that I would like sneak when my parents were in the hey. house. <laughs> I would. It was definitely appointment viewing for me. I would try to leave family gatherings and find a TV, whatever house I was in. It could be my grandparents' house. I would sneak up to the bedroom to watch The Simpsons and my cousins too at uh, seven o'clock on Sunday if I had to. Like I would make a, a point to watch that show. Man. Did you ever make a point, Tam, to watch any show? Of course. Okay, which would be? I mean, are we going old school? Well, Whatever's that was the question I just asked. You could go to your top ten or five or whatever later, but the question I asked was, what show did you make a point to watch? A 70s show. That 70s show was great. Yes. Did you ever watch that 80s show? I tried. But in the he, he asked you though. No, I've only seen a couple shows. It was terrible. Yeah, but it was the the daughter and mother duo. That seventy uh, show, or that eighty show? Eighty show. No, that eighty show was a uh, trying to catch the success of that seventy show, but by oh, people who had no idea why that show worked, <laughs> and so they just put like six different people, like a punk rocker and a yuppie yeah. in like yeah. a record store. And that was the plot. And it was just the worst. It thing was ever. unwatchable after two episodes. Okay, I didn't see it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. And I think that's when it was canceled. Too. It was. It was <laughs> Did it make so it more bad. than two episodes? Because I didn't make it more than two episodes. The thing that made that 70s show so great was that it was a great show that happened to be set in the 70s. It w- but that 80s show was... Hey, weren't the 80s funny? There were punk rockers and yuppies, <laughs> and they lived side by side. And the clothes they wore. Yes. It was no, no substance at all. That 70s show had characters and substance and plots, and it was it. great. It's one of those that you turn the TV, and I can't turn it if it's on. What did you think about... And I used to Netflix it all the time. What did you think about Randy and the fact that he was completely <laughs> excluded from the season finale? That oh, okay. Series finale. He asked you the question. I'll give my answer after, but I like, yeah, what, I mean, yeah. How'd you feel about Randy? Randy was brought in to replace Eric you remember? in the last season. I didn't like the whole replacement. Nobody did, and that's why he was completely ignored in the finale. They brought Eric back, and Randy was never mentioned or thought of by yep. anybody. She said goodbye to him in that one episode. Did she? Donna? She kind of did. Before the last episode? Because oh, I, I vaguely... That. Well, see, that's just it. I, I remember don't remember him. either. I think Wasn't there was an episode where she kind well, of... Well, there was an episode she... where she told him she didn't want to date him. No. Which might have been that... That might have been the last episode he was in. But the thing is... is that might have been the last acting job he had. He was <laughs> bad. He was he bad. Dated, he they dated. They dated. They did. 
But I think then I had she stopped at watching one point, the show after Ashton Kutcher left. Okay, That's why things so, need to have an ending time because right? then Randy happens to us. So I I watched when and Ashton left. That's where left the phrase "jump the shark" comes from. Because he actually, happy days. yeah, he came <laughs> back, but it was when. But Topher we don't Grace we watch. Left. Actually, that's good to bring up because that's not the ones we we rewatch. Right, it, it's so when Topher Netflix, Grace left when until he they went just to deleted it recently. We always watch season one to whatever until he came seven. in seven. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want. I'm like, whenever he came in, it, it's stopped. basically when we call Eric, those the dark times. Well, even when exactly, it got, actually, we it stopped w- even before then because we knew it was coming. Yeah, so, so when, when Eric basically was point, g- going he to was Africa, moving away. Yep, we stopped watching and we'll restart it because it's just not worth it. That's kind of funny, <laughs> but that's one of the benefits of streaming is that we've all kind of forged our own ending to the show. Yep. This is how we want to see it end. I watched Brand, The Office I a mean, lot. And I think a lot of people stop watching The Office when Michael Scott leaves. I, I still think it's a pretty good show for a few more years. But I dislike the character of Pam more and more and more as it goes along. <laughs> and that's got to be something sexist because that happens to every female character in every show. Kelly Bundy was just stupid beyond belief. Monica from Friends became really irritating she yeah i think that the feminists have a thing to have to pick up the slack on this i think there's something going on where the the female principal character of every show after enough time just becomes a cartoon character like shelly long and cheers no she left on her own kirstie alley was don't you ever say anything bad <laughs> about the Cheers era. I like who's era. talking. Okay, the Cheers <laughs> era, Kirstie Alley. I don't care I'm about what you say about Tam her now. I'm on this one. Oh. Uh-oh. I don't and care I'm what you say now. I'm a little bit more on Matt's side. Like the Kirstie Alley. Cheers like, is an exception. I thought exception. they both were annoying. annoying oh, they were. She had her nice. whiny bits. Cheers sure, is an exception to all the rules. But every time a to... show jumps the shark, it is the female character that becomes the cartoon. Kelly Bundy becomes so stupid she couldn't even breathe. She literally wouldn't have been alive. She was made to be that stupid. <laughs> and it was not funny. Monica was made to be so irritating that she wanted to kick the TV in Friends. She's just OCD. She was shrill and <laughs> really overbearing. Well, that's how I yeah. felt but about Sarah Jessica Parker. That's not what the Parker character started off to be. I didn't watch that show. I, I was, didn't watch that show either. I had a girlfriend at the time when Sex in the City was like a big fucking thing where... I just knew that was that was my the end of my weekend was that and and I I watched the shows I gave it the good old college try and it was just wow I felt bad to be a guy it's <laughs> it, 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 it's their world you're just and that's exactly what it was but her part or her part was just it blew me away and there's a a a small bit in one of my other shows. I it barely did. It didn't make the list, but newsroom. <clears throat> they kind of make a, a. They're in New York and they make a reference on Sex in the City and how it's just so far fetched and how someone like of her stature had all this money but yet no job and all their friends also had no jobs but all they could do is talk about their relationships and, and <laughs> it was just like it's so unreal Wasn't to base there a your life or yeah writer in there yeah there was, was Carrie was a was blogger that? yeah, yeah. <laughs> she she wrote the article sex in the city yeah, yeah. that was her that was There's where the money. title came from one yeah. made it <laughs> <laughs> so i didn't watch that show either but i also had a girlfriend in those days and she loved it and so did her friends and i was like you know what it's it's cool. It's not for me. I'm not the audience. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's bad. Yeah. It doesn't mean you shouldn't. So I would just be like, great, you love a show, but <laughs> I'll do something else. Yeah. But I guess I'm more mature than you are. <laughs> <laughs> well. No, that show never bothered me because I mean, it was. it's nice to see people find something they, they love. It and that th- show for every woman I worked with at the time, too, was the mm-hmm. topic of conversation. And I could just kind of sit back and say, it's it's great. It's not for me, but more power to you. Well, it was kind of my I got married thing, with children. That's not for women. <laughs> There's no women I know that like that show. It would be really, really sexist of me to assume that everyone has <laughs> to like everything to all the time. Show. Right. That was another one of the ones on my mom's list. <laughs> oh, she would hate that. Oh, we watched oh, yeah. it. But I had two brothers. I watched probably what they watched. Yeah. Do you have to be a nerd to enjoy a show like Game of Thrones? No, you have to no. pay HBO money. And but, I've never done that. I mean, Barb Matt's right. Like you do have to, or know somebody that. I mean, I'd be willing to 
give you my password. You but, know, I've been trying to get um, through the Sopranos. Or have watch parties. Well, that was, yeah, before COVID or after. <laughs> but yeah, watch parties are a good way to do it. Because uh, actually a couple of my shows came from HBO. And not every one of them are... Y- y- we didn't have HBO growing up, so I missed out on The Sopranos. The Sopranos were earlier in, in, our, in, in I don't know, my teens, mid 20s, early to whatever yeah. it was. Like, I, I missed out on The Sopranos because that was kind of like. That's right the same for I me because we never either, had cable to. growing up, so I missed out on The Sopranos. We didn't either, yeah. But that's one I, I missed out twice. Need to catch up on. I missed out twice on The Sopranos because I didn't watch it when it was first running because. I have a problem with hour-long dramas. I have no attention <laughs> span. Every show on my list is going to be a 30-minute sitcom. Really? <laughs> but I have so much trouble sitting down for an hour and paying attention <laughs> that I never watched The Sopranos as it ran. But if and you then, know the time, is that the problem? Oh, yes. Fuck. I know that it's going to be something... I'm going to have to pay attention to all the things because they're going to be... <laughs> Built don't upon. look at the time. Can you look at something and not like how long? That's it's how Tam be? does her treadmill. I routines. totally do. That's why I'm asking. I, I won't should look at it. maybe I and should then... get a I should get a treadmill or something facing a TV and just that's what I'm doing. Well, now. and I won't even look like even though it says like this to this uh, time wise like when it starts and what the ending time is, I won't look at it. And then once I kind of side look at it and it goes away, I'll put a towel over the treadmill <laughs> so that I have no idea. So I think I've gotten a little better in my old age, but I had a friend a couple, maybe last year, recommend, tell me again. He was a big Sopranos fan, and he said, you have to watch it. It's free on Prime. I've been wanting to. And so I, I got through like did. four episodes, and then I just forgot all about it. Uh-oh. I was enjoying it. Oh, okay. I was enjoying it, but I forgot all about it. And then when I went back to it like last week, yeah. it's all behind a paywall now. It's been removed. Oh. It's back on HBO or something. I can't see it anymore. So I missed out on The Sopranos twice. That that sucks. That sucks. Yeah. yeah. But Ooh. I have to really be kind of ready to watch a show. Like a whole series. I tried watching Breaking Bad three times before I actually got through it all. Because I would start to watch it, like on a plane. I would download several episodes. And I watched three of them on a plane to New York one time. And I was just like, it's good. But I never went back to it. <laughs> and then I would try again later, and it's good, but I never went back to it. And then Actually, I kind of... Same with us on that one. Then the third time I tried to get into it, I really did. I got into it, and then I just loved it, and I binged it for like two months. I went through all five seasons. So you just got to push through it a little I just bit. have to be ready for it. You know, I have ready. to want to commit to this right now. And it, until I'm ready, I'm not ready. That's just kind of how my brain is. It's like... It's not going to let me enjoy anything until I'm ready for that thing to be the thing I enjoy. I, I and I really it. wanted Sopranos to be that right yeah. now, and it's gone. And it pissed me off because I was <laughs> so ready for it. I've tried, I've tried watching Mad Men several times, and I can't get into it. But I know it's something I might like, Wait, just not one? yet. Mad, Mad Men. Men. I it's can just, get that. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, I quit Mad Men after like four episodes, I think. Too. <laughs> yes, I've done that twice. But now. I actually did enjoy it, which is weird. Yeah, I've I've been through the first three or four episodes twice, and I just I really want to get into it, and I feel like any minute now it's going to grab me. It doesn't, <laughs> but everyone gets so nuts right, about it. There's certain shows I know that are out there that I'm looking forward to, like The Boys is one that I've been waiting. It's out there, but I haven't done it because i got to be ready for it. Yeah. And the Umbrella. The Umbrella Academy. Yep. That one I love, too. I'm excited that the new season is here, but the same thing, I don't start it because I have to be ready for I've it. I've seen like the wanna, trailer like, for that, and that's one where I'm like, this looks really good, but I just don't feel in the mood to start this. So yeah. I totally understand where Matt's coming from. Because you're looking yeah. forward to it, but you're not ready to see it. I've gotten to a thing now, which has happened to me twice, with Better Call Saul and The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> where <laughs> I have, watched that one. I've loved it from the beginning, but then a whole year passes before the next season, and yep. I forget everything that's already happened. That's what happened with Maisel for us. When you're waiting through a season, yeah. Yeah. and you watch other stuff, it's hard to go back sometimes. So now with Better Call Saul, I'm just waiting for it to be completely over so that I can watch it from front to back. Because I watched like three seasons. Seasons and I forgot everything that happened. That's kind of fun. And that's what I was actually. Thinking I hate about that. With, oh, uh, really? I, like I really re-watching. hate the way that's, I hate the way they I'm distribute food things motivated, now. But I'm like, let's make some food. 
I and hate. Then we I snack absolutely... all day and we watch it all day. Well, the, the thing that started it was Orange Is the New Black, which I that's one of ours. I watched the first season and I loved it and I was really hooked. But a year till the next season, season two, I didn't even try. <clears throat> I was right, no longer even so interested. That's where it we lost stopped me. at a certain at three. season now. Three. So it was we watched season one and two, but it was between two and three because I think it was actually even longer than a year. Uh-huh. It seemed like they dropped it that June instead of like that April or whatever, and we were just we were on to other shit. Yeah, and and yeah. it it was like we can only really handle maybe a couple episodes of of a TV show a week when we're in doing our downtime. So to add another one on to what we were already watching at that time, it was just like me. And then we tried later on, like a handful of months when we were looking for something later. And I just couldn't get into it. Like it just, the stories, even though I knew what had happened in the last season, they weren't as fresh so I didn't have the same emotions or feelings or whatever it was. Right. I wasn't as invested. That's the problem. It, and, and it kind of, I mean, I was worried about Mandalorian this year because of how awesome it was last year. And it was almost a year <laughs> we had to wait. You. But, I mean, it's it's here. I'm, I'm like, yeah, every week. I can't, I mean, it was since I was a kid. And that's what brought on this whole, ep- this whole topic was I, I ever since, it's been since I was a kid that all of a sudden I'm looking forward to a TV show every week. That's yeah, a new one. I, I forgot that. about The Mandalorian. Well, I didn't put it on any list because it's so new. Like, right. we're just in but season even the two. Music. It could still like, disappoint you. Well, even exactly. The music <laughs> the and it might what, overrun its its life. Right? That's what I'm afraid of is, like, I please, I hope that, like... Baby Yoda hits puberty and it's all downhill for me. Well, it's so funny because we have surround sound, and so when the music hits, it could be a horrible episode, good episode. That it's, theme song is so much better with a good bass. It is. <laughs> I lo- and I was telling him, I'm like, I, th- I love the intro, the music. Just I love dun, it. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it it's got a good you little get catchy. Pumped and like, yeah, something's gonna go down. Right. We're watching Mandalorian. <laughs> He's gonna. <laughs> oh man. Game of Thrones is like that for me. For Maybe season six. All the way up to six? Or just that season? How many season? seasons were um, there? Actually, there was <laughs> seven or Probably eight? Um, up till seven, I would say. Because the eighth season, you kind of so knew they were trying. That's you when kind of knew they R. R. had Martin a set left. amount of episodes. And you're like, how are they going to conclude this with this many episodes? And you kind of knew that it was starting to get rushed and it wasn't going to get completed the way it was supposed to. Which is why everyone was pissed at the show's creators, because they also kind of took the money and ran <laughs> oh. to do their Star Wars project that they didn't finish that project either. But it's also one of those where I was like, if I would have just watched it all, binge watched the entire thing, would I have the same kind of sour taste in my mouth? <laughs> Good question. So, I mean, it, that's an interesting one because seasons one through six I just binged because I was kind of late. Oh, to catch up. Because I was late to that train. And that was one where I was like, oh, I can see why people really like this show. And then after I like caught up, then I was like, oh, man, this is really painful to wait a week for a new episode. <laughs> Your generation can just go to hell. <laughs> See, and, that, that, and, and I think that was what made me but feel. But Seinfeld was one of those shows when we were growing up. So that was that we would basically wait for the new episode to come out, and that was when Seinfeld was at its peak, and it was also right before they ended that show too, because. Oh, um, Seinfeld there seems to be a pattern it. here. He mentioned on an interview with Larry King, he was like, no, I left the show when it was the best show on, on television. I didn't get fired from the show. That's I true. left. Right. They did end it when they wanted to. The ending wasn't good at all. In fact, I just rewatched a lot of Seinfeld, and when I got to the very last episode and realized it was the last episode, I stopped it and said, I don't ever need to see that again. Oh no! It's it was one of those, not like, good. I just never need to see again. It didn't happen. No, that oh. that whole ending episode was. I remember the craze, the national craze that went on the night that that aired. I liked that episode when it came see, out because I, I thought remember. it felt like a teaser for. They oh, wanted, we're just yeah. gonna be. Never mind. 
and then we're we'll going to come out with a new season, <laughs> yeah. which they kind of set it up that way, and you never really know. They did that to tease you on purpose, <laughs> but it was. But n- now that it's been years later, and that's the ending. Ending, I kind of feel the same way Matt does. It's like that wasn't a great ending to <laughs> such a good show. Cheers had a great ending. That's a satisfying ending. That's the only show oh, I can think of that had a decent ending. That's why it's an anomaly. Um, it, it, it's funny we we've mentioned Cheers a couple times, and, and so I was actually going to get to the classics, um, because I think that that one goes in that category a little bit. I think it's getting there. I think a little bit. I mean, it. I, I remember being in college, like when I first started college, I had a professor who was a public speaking professor. And he was talking about how MASH was the greatest thing, oh. uh, the greatest show on TV Mash. of his generation. Oh, and my I friend and I Mash. were discussing that. And we're like, well, Cheers clearly is our I MASH. Cheers, too. <laughs> and to this day, we have both, he and I have watched Cheers through several times. And it's another show that has chapters. It's got the Shelley Long chapter and the Woody Rebecca ch- chapter yeah. and the Woody and the coach. And it, it's just... It's so good at every chapter because it and knows Carlos what it is. And Carlos had chapters of her own each all the way through. Yeah, and but it 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 really tried to adapt, which most shows don't. Like most shows, you can kind of feel when it's a cash grab. The Simpsons, because that was <laughs> supposed to have ended with Frank Grimes, and that was like I don't know half the run ago. That was that was a long, long time ago, and most of my. Mostly, I wish it had. Even when I was still watching it and kind of not laughing and kind of cringing, mm. I was kinda still kind of like glad that it was going to set a record for like beating the the Friends Flintstones or whatever the fuck it was up against. But now I'm just like I wish this had ended in season thirteen. I really do because it would have just have a had a crystal clean legacy. Uh, there weren't many that, that had that kind of legacy and, and like some of the childhood ones, I'll go through my list cause we're getting kind of long on old. things. Yeah. So like on my, on my classic, like, which was the stuff that like we had to watch as a family. One of the first ones that I can remember my mom making us like, she didn't make us watch it. <laughs> Church on Sunday. But, but it, it, Church but, channels but, on. But it, well, it, it kind of turned into the, the household TV show. Uh, was Quantum Leap? I mentioned that one. Um, Starman. Jeff Bridges, Starman. No, that was the movie. that was the movie. I can't remember who the actor was in the TV show, and I was actually going to start looking all that up, and I wish I had done my homework a little sooner. But that was the one show that I can remember kind of watching quite religiously because my mom was like really infatuated with that show. And I liked it. As a kid, it kind of had that futuristic sci-fi kind of stuff. And this was also, like, we would watch Star Trek, The Next Generation, was kind of, like, big and new at that time. But I wouldn't put it on my list, so I didn't. (laughs) Uh, Dukes of Hazzard, I mentioned, because that was, like, the forbidden show. Like if my mom heard that what shit, what was wrong with like, that show? I never watched it. I, I my, my parents loved that show. It, I mean, it was just it was. We named our animals Boss Hog, Roscoe. <laughs> <laughs> we have so our family definitely was Boss Hog and the Duke Boys are the only names I know from that show, it, but yeah. only from parodies of it. Well, it, I mean, it it was just this hillbilly show. I mean, I loved the car because it was just this classic, slick looking just. Car. I mean, it didn't. It's been canceled, by the way. Yeah, it's got it a Confederate was, flag yeah, on the roof. Yeah, that that the that, generally. I didn't yeah. understand that at the time, and <laughs> no. Yeah, well, the as an adult, did. it's kind of like oh, I'm slightly ashamed, but I still liked. The, I mean, they never made any comment or even talked Were about there any the black flag, but it was in the show. Not often, but sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Occasionally, yeah, you you almost kind of had your um, blazing saddle situation. Ooh, wait, Not, clarify that. Well, I mean, just they because <laughs> that wasn't token, a good, I guess. A token black person. Yeah, but they weren't subjugated. No, 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 no. Treated like subhuman. No. If anything, they were just like one of those. You know how like they did it in the eighties with the guest characters. 
Yeah, but Benson was the character in every single episode. Yeah. The guy who played Benson. Um, And then Baywatch was also another one that... Never watched Baywatch, though I was a big Yasmeen Bleeth fan. Um, and see, Basketball, I, though. That's yo, where I knew her basketball. from. Basketball. <laughs> Did you actually like that as a show? Yeah, I wanted or was to be it the like kid. A I wanted to Penny be like catalog I wanted to be situation. Joey or whatever his name was, <laughs> Hasselhoff's kid. Like it, that was kind of like, oh man, that was the dream to be like this up and coming lifeguard with all these fucking hot chicks that were Isn't like ten years old. So it was like a JC Penny catalog type situation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was yes. probably the one show that was a little above my age grade. That my mom somehow didn't seem to make me ch- turn off, or some where she wasn't around, or something. I was able to watch more Baywatch as a kid than I was Dukes of Hazard or The Simpsons or Seinfeld or any of the other ones that my did mom just to? didn't agree to. And for well, I made a point to try and watch <laughs> all of them, but I'm just kidding. I got more Baywatch episodes in, or at least I can remember. Um, but that's kind of that was my classic list. What about you, man? Classics. Well, speaking of things that I loved then that don't hold up now, uh-huh. Alf, Alf, oh, <laughs> does not See, hold Alf. up. Nor does the magic transfer to the new generation because I tried to watch it with my son. Like, oh my god, I loved Alf as a kid. Watch this. Neither of us enjoyed it oh, at all. See, it was bad watching again. <laughs> it was bad watching again. Alf does not hold up. He's not uh. funny. <laughs> it, the puppetry is not majestic. <laughs> Yeah, no. Skip Alf. Let that live in your memories. Okay. Bummer. Because I, I loved Alf, too. Or, or I remember loving Alf. Yeah. I had an Alf lunchbox. Oh, it was appointment viewing for me and my friend Brian. We would always... I think we used to try to watch it together. Like, I'd go to his house or he'd come to mine. But we would always watch... We lived in the same neighborhood. Right. We would watch Alf. That was our thing. Like I had, I had Simpsons friends. I had an Alf friend. Um... You know, olive branch. I'm all about the olive yeah, branch. Yeah, I was going to say, back then, it's about... I will find a way to like you. Who you will watch TV with. Even if with. you're a Trumper now. Exactly. We'll find a way to like you in the past. What can we watch on TV together? <laughs> exactly. Probably That's sports. That's all I cared about. Um, God. Classics, though. For me, my parents would have things on, and I would play. We'd all be in the living room, the family, and, and I'd... My brother and sister would be there, and my parents, and they'd be watching something. Incredible Hulk, I remember them watching a lot. I never paid attention. I, I would be playing with some of my bit. toys, like, off in the, on the side, just yeah. in the same room, but not paying attention at all. But I remember the Incredible Hulk looking kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Tin Grin, which must have been a James Bond movie, guy with metal teeth. Mm-hmm. My dad called him Tin Grin. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure it is one of the James Bond movies. Not a series, but something I distinctly remember, like seeing and being scared of as a, as a very little kid that's indelibly marked in my brain. <laughs> Someone knows James Bond better than I do. But no, my sister was a big Facts of Life fan. I wholly rejected that. <laughs> Family Ties I did like. Growing Pains I loved. That's yeah. funny. I mentioned both of those earlier. <laughs> yeah. Growing Pains, I'm afraid to watch again. I don't think it'll hold up. <laughs> Family Ties absolutely does. does family it? Ties, I just watched on Thanksgiving, and I was I had a Zoom with my family, and we started talking about TV shows, and I was I said, just before this call, I watched two episodes of Family Ties, and they hold up. I'm proud to say, not only do they hold up, they're better than anything today, because they're smart. The one episode I watched right before the call... The entire third act was a discussion about the legitimacy of the First Amendment of the Constitution. And I'm like, that's what TV's missing. Yeah. I know things I know because I saw them on TV. That's what I loved about Boston Legal. I used to be smart because things on TV taught me. But they did. And now they don't. Yeah, right. Social, like political. I once I once beat my sister in a game of Trivial Pursuit because I knew that Yale University was in New Haven, Connecticut, which I learned from Mike Seaver getting it wrong <laughs> on the growing pains because he was corrected by some girl who said, isn't Yale in New Haven? And I'm like, I remember that for the rest of my life. And I beat my sister when that question came up. Yeah. That's so great. Trivial Pursuit. That's awesome. That's what TV used to give us. And now it's largely... 
Mm, Bullshit. Not garbage, but it's not really enhancing your life. It's more of a distraction now. Yeah. Yeah. But I know a lot of stuff I know. Not a Petty fan of trivia. the Kardashian. <laughs> I've never seen an episode. Thankfully, but no, me I don't find them attractive. And Same, that's me that's either. one of the reasons why I've never seen an episode. Because they don't know where Yale is. <laughs> Likely. <laughs> because I because I can't jack off to them, frankly. That's I don't need them in my life. God has given us Pornhub and attractive <laughs> women. I've never been attracted to the Kardashians. And personality has a lot to do with it. I just assume a lot about them. That's unfair, sure. I don't know them at all, but yeah, I assume I they're vapid. I can't. And I just don't like vapid people. I don't watch a lot of reality, actually. But that was actually one of the questions that I asked Tam. I was like, do we put reality TV in as all? Like, I as mean, a, we watch Big Brother. We, the Two Quarters is the only one I've ever watched. That, yeah, it made me sad, too. It was not good. Which yeah, one? Yeah, The Two the Quarries. The Two Quarries, Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. Mm. They did have a show. It was sad and not well done. Mm. And just, I, I watched, watched it and it. I felt just. I felt bad for the. For I felt Haim. bad for Haim. Wow. Yeah. Well, Haim was in a bad... I, was, and, I felt and, really bad for Haim, and then I didn't understand why Feldman was successful still, and I just didn't think he deserved that success. And I just... I left it like... And this then Haim killed me. or OD'd Haim died. Yeah. shortly after that, or right like when they were... Like, and it was just, oh, man, it just... I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. That's a reality I didn't need a window into. Yeah, exactly. I think um, they were exploiting Haim. I know they were exploiting Haim because Feldman was already in on a, a Lost Boys 2. That was a whole oh, plot yeah. line one time. And the he Lost got all upset. He wouldn't tell Haim, because Haim was on this mission to produce and create He wanted Lost to bring Boys it back, because that was like the highlight of his life. Yes, and he thought they could get back on top if they could just do Lost Boys 2, but Corey Feldman would confide in his wife that he doesn't know how to tell Haim that he's already been approached to appear as a cameo in Lost Boys 2, which is being made. And At like, that time, yeah. And now that you know that Hayden fucking killed himself, it's just all the more dark because Feldman couldn't even be uh, be straight with him, you know? Yeah. They were supposed to be <clears throat> close, weren't they? They were supposed to be best friends. Yeah. Hayden thought Feldman was his best friend. Feldman's wife is his best friend. That's clear from the show. Hmm. But Feldman wasn't all that great to Hayden. No. I mean, and Hayden is dead now. So Feldman's got to live with that shit forever. Yeah, yeah, and Haim was, was the actor. Because like, jealous- yeah. Haim was the cute one. I mean, yeah. just saying. He was. No, he was, he was cute, the guy so that I wanted that to be. Attention, which, he was yeah. the cute right. one with the personality. He had he had it all going for him because he was Canadian, and that's better. <laughs> 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 uh, the reason I asked was Amazing Race. Oh, that's a good one, too. Is uh, the, the I, I watched for years and years, and, and she mentioned Big Brother, which I've watched, I think, all but maybe one or two seasons of, and they're... They're pretty deep into their run, um, but Amazing Race was one of those shows that I wanted to be on. Like oh, I wanted. F- to, when I heard uh, about Amazing Race, it was because several of my aunts told me that I would be good on that show and I would like would that be. show, and I should try to be on that show because I lived in California. The only show I ever tried to be on, by the way, was Win Ben Stein's Money, and I did not make the cut. <laughs> Same with Passions. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Passions? Yes, I tried out for Passions. I loved Passions. <laughs> I loved to hate Passions. Oh, my God. Yeah, I auditioned. Where was that filmed? In Orlando? No, it was it was in Santa Barbara, but I had there was I had an agent at one point was doing runway shows for American Crew, uh-huh. and I kept saying I wanted to do film, commercials, blah, 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 so there was an open tryout for Passions. Oh. And do you have any idea what kind of character you would have played? No, I I can based on I like <laughs> I tried to do my research like after, and I don't know how far after the contest they casted a character. But when I started watching, there was this new young kid that came in, and he was like fucking built like I am not. <laughs> so I have to take away from the fact that I did not get the role because I did not have the six pack and beefy upper body that you're very yeah. slender. And, and, and very I was, muscular. I was also very like not tan. Oh. <laughs> was it a reoccurring role or yeah. just a one off? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that show but, was so ridiculous. It was going to go to that guy anyway. Yeah. You know, it was just a ridiculous it, show. I couldn't help but watch it <laughs> throughout its years. And it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> 
And it, but it was also kind of like, wow, they'll cast almost anybody. <laughs> but it, it was, it was good because I mean, that's what a soap opera is. <laughs> Just total. It's total popcorn. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you don't take it too seriously. Yeah, it's all popcorn though. I love popcorn. I was popcorn. just going to defend early soap opera versus that, <laughs> but it really comes down to that. If you guys it's seen, not... oh God, keep talking. I want to think of the name of okay. it. Okay. Um, what are, well, are we going the, soap opera song? Well, no, it's no, no. a Netflix soap opera, but oh. it's, a, it's popcorn. Netflix. It's what I always call popcorn. Because the only other two things I didn't want to get away from, but like top shows, and it's funny because we, we've talked about it. There's always bad endings. These two shows also had bad endings. A lot of series endings. start good. Deadwood. Oh, uh, but the one thing about that, it didn't really have an ending. It wasn't. A proper. Yeah, the writer's strike ended that one. And HBO decided, well, we're not going to keep spending money on COVID's you guys. COVID's fucking shit up, too. But the, the other one, and this is kind of like that breaching window of reality realm, but Top Gear. Like the original Top Gear, like with Clarkson, May, and, and Hammond. Like, I can watch any of those all right. the way to the Amazon bits. Like, But there was obviously the bad issue with the producer and BBC or otherwise, we would still have probably Top Gear the way it used to be. Who knows? Those guys definitely got what they wanted with Amazon they Prime. They still are the same, just different. But, I mean, there, there's not much that can top that show as far as what they brought to television. I never saw Top Gear because it's about cars, and that's all I knew about it. Yeah. I'm not interested. But when I came to your house that one time to <laughs> podcast, and you had on the Grand Tour, uh-huh. and they made the car out of mud bricks... <laughs> and I was like, what is this? And we went home, my son and I binge watched the entire season. I loved it. I'm not into cars and I watch Top Gear. I they're love just, that show. They're all... I don't care about cars. I love that show. <laughs> they're a good trio. We were just watching, like on Wednesday, my son and I, James May's got a cooking show and he doesn't cook. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just like, we saw it in the Netflix queue and like, so James May is so cool. They'll just let him do whatever he wants. He's got like time. four fucking shows. Yeah, he's got like an aerospace rocket show. And he's... James May travels. James May does. So this. we watched him cooking. We watched several episodes of him cooking, and he's got a, a woman in the closet, the cupboard, who is actually a professional cook. And whenever he fucks up, he calls her out to fix it. And then he'll make a joke about how through the magic of editing, he's never made that problem, and now they're perfect. You know, <laughs> but it is he's just such a fun guy. Oh, but James man. May has always been. And we got the Grand Tour video game, and we fight over who gets to be James May. Because That's Because James funny. May is the most lovable guy in the world. I think you guys have played it more than me. I downloaded it, I started it, and that's about as far as I've gone. And I, I there, there's so many other video games that I, I, yeah. I remember like, oh, wait, I have this. But I, I like the fact that they also would pick on Hammond. <laughs> I love how they pick on it. There is something, and I've always been an Anglophile, but there is something about the humor of English people that I just I love their love humor so much, and it's just it <laughs> runs rampant in that show. Jeremy Clarkson is a master of putting you down. <laughs> <laughs> He's like my grandma, <laughs> and I can't believe that people argue with him. Still, he has been so successful, wildly successful. All three of them have, and yet they still argue about budgeting, what he can do, what he can say. It's like. You just shut up and let him do what he wants. And that is kind of the foundation of Netflix productions, you know? Yeah. I remember hearing someone, some comedian, was like, we had all these fights. It was kind of a Chappelle-like thing. Where, like, we were constantly fighting with the Comedy Central guys. But the next Netflix people are like, you're the funny one. You do whatever you want. Here's all the money. And it always, always works. When you let the creative people be creative, it always works. And yet... People still argue with Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. And he is a genius. And James May's a genius. And Hammond's a genius. And the fact that they work, the way they work together is just so. I don't know if you can really name another trio. <laughs> I mean, what? The Stooges, the Three Stooges, the Marx Brothers? Like, yeah. there are certain. In this century, no. It, yeah, there's not much that can top Clarkson, May, and The Hammond. Stooges I never found funny, but they didn't have a lot of competition either. Right. Clarkson's got all the competition, and yet they shine. They're so good. Yeah. 
they even came to Colorado one time, which was an extra special thing. And I was like, God, I wish I knew I would have Same. gone there. I had heard Just about it. Just to see the drone filming them, I would have gone there. Right. Or the road shut down when while I they went did to, it. When I went to England last year, I literally checked their schedule to see if I could get into one of their studio tents. But it wasn't filming at that time of the year. I, well, I, I will look, go out of my way to be anywhere within those three guys' periphery. Well, I look back at it now, and I'm not so sure that they're going to bring anything back. So I wonder <laughs> if when you went, that was when they were done. They had, I don't know. Because they did that they, little they, they sequest those, thing. Well, they the way they do it is they do all the traveling for part of the year, then they do all the studio stuff for part of the year. But it's all shot out out of sequence like that. And the time of year I was going was not the time of year they were doing uh, the audience stuff. Got it. Because... I just, I look back at when they ended. Now, in 2020, they had cut out the audio, audience stuff because of budgeting. Yeah. So it was just going to be the documentary of them So traveling. they're still doing stuff? Cause Season I, four was supposed to be just them traveling, and I don't think it's come out yet. I haven't checked lately, though. So if they even filmed, that's all I need to know. The last one I saw was the, the semen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and last time I checked, that was still the most recent episode. Same, yeah. So I don't think season four has been released, but I did hear that it was supposed to have been done documentary style, but not with the audience participation part. doesn't matter. It's just them that we're watching anyway. Yes. And it's <laughs> crazy to me that anyone would take anything away from those guys after the absolute success they've been. Yeah. Give them more shows, which is apparently they've what They've even Prime expanded the brand to America. The Top Gear America is a thing with like Joey from Friends, right? Well, th- I think they do other countries. I think there's Top Gear oh, Italy and probably. other stuff. Like it's turned into a pretty massive franchise. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Speaking of Joey from Friends, Friends was another show. That I was it? I used to watch that one. I think that was a great one, uniting white people of both sexes. You know, and <laughs> specifically white people. Marco, did you ever watch Friends? I was a more of a Seinfeld guy. Yeah. They had Puerto Ricans sometimes on Seinfeld. <laughs> it was very little color on Friends. It was funny on Conan O'Brien, because we've talked about him. He once had it in the year 2000. You know, the, the bit he did in the year 2000. <laughs> but as that a guest... That was such a classic bit. As a guest, he had Mr. T. <laughs> and they were doing the year 2000. And Mr. 18. T said, in the year 2000, a special episode of Friends reveals that New York has black people. <laughs> <laughs> so there was always kind of that commentary on it, the whitewashing of New York City in that show. That brings up A-Team, though. <laughs> A-Team. Oh, the A-team. They used to, we I never watched, watched that as a family. It's funny, I never Murdoch watched... Murdoch and Mr. T were my two favorite. I never watched the uh, A-Team, but I had the Hot Wheels, and I think I even had the big transport van <laughs> oh. as a carrier for the I Hot had, Wheels. I had the Hot Wheels one. Mr. Yeah. T was afraid to fly, yeah. so they had to darn them. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a show I would revisit, oh, though. MacGyver was another one my yeah, mom was MacGyver. all about. I only know MacGyver from The Simpsons. Patty yeah. and Selma are big. What's his name? The the main guy. He's got three names. He's one of those three name guys. Oh, Mike. Mike. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> Mike. Fuck. <laughs> Mike. Fuck. Mike. Fuck. Shit. I have no idea. I can't. I remember. love him. Yeah. <laughs> Patty He's so good in that one show. <laughs> Patty and Selma were big MacGyver fans, and they loved that guy. So that's why I know MacGyver, but I never watched an episode in my life. Uh, he was good. But I, know, I do know that. To like Tom Selleck, uh, what's his? Hawaiian Five-0. <laughs> Hawaii Five-0. Magnum PI. And yes, Hawaiian's the, the newer version. Hawaii Five-0 was of, something else. Yeah. But that was a show. Yeah. He had the gym shorts and the Hawaiian shirt and the mustache. Now, what do you think about the mustache? Although he came on to Friends. Yes, he did. I'm typically not just a mustache fan. I like the goatee or like, I like hair. Mutton chops. I, I like things attaching to the stash. <laughs> my, my mustache is free flowing, but it does, is accompanied no, by. No, yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. enough. Yes. I, I can't do the solo mustache. That is a skill that Tom Very, Selleck, he, pretty he much only it. Tom Selleck has that skill. There's a few other people I know that can, but not. I don't many. know anyone who looks. Who has a mustache and looks good. I know people who have them who shouldn't. Uh, Tom Selleck was, well, my dad. My dad was a mustache guy. He wore it well. He had a beard at the end of his life. It did not look good. Well, it's funny because my dad, the opposite. I've known him forever with his beard and mustache. 
he shaved it. And granted, I was young and <clears throat> didn't understand fully, but I cried. I hated it. Yeah. Tom Selleck the... shaved his mustache on Friends. And he didn't look that good? No. And Alex Trebek, I wish oh, he had died with the mustache. That's a... Yeah. R.I.P., but damn, that was a mistake. Mm-hmm. Alex Trebek wore the hell out of that mustache. When you can wear a Mauser like that, yep. you and then embrace I actually that. Liked, that I is like you. the ones that go down. What's the... Handlebar. I do like that. But again, it has to be on the right kind of situation person. Who else could rock a mustache? Not Actually, many people. Oh, Sam Elliott. Connery. How can you not? Sam oh, Elliott. Sam Elliott. Yeah. I was going to say yeah. Sean Connery. And not but... Dickie Rocket. Most women cream over him. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Elliott? Oh. His voice, though. I don't know much about Sam Elliott other than the Big Lebowski. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or Coors commercials. Was he a Coors guy? He used to. Or Dodge. There Dodge was a bit pickups. where he used to do Well, I know Coors. his voice. He used to yeah. do Dodge. He's been a big voice guy, but has he put his face on those things? No. Because it wasn't until Big Lebowski Well, he did on course. Yeah, there was, there was times where you saw him in the mountains and he had the cowboy hat and whatnot. Sam I Elliott? probably thought he yeah. was one of the Coors brothers or something. <laughs> so never paid attention. But um, Here, I'll pause this real quick. I love the part where they like were Sir fighting. I suffered that much, but I like uh, Bruce Willis. I love Bruce happened. Willis because of uh, Blind Date, the movie Blind Date. Did uh, you see that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> one of my all-time favorites. I forgot about that one. All that right. and John Larroquette. So funny. Screw it. I'm not even going to bother <laughs> editing this bit. Because oh. I just... It, there's, there is. You're right. There's, there's, there's some guy. Cause the like, guy who played Booger in um, oh, Curtis Booger. Armstrong. He played Booger in The Revenge of the Nerds. And Van Wilder. Yeah. That he was guy. In Van and Wilder and too. American Dad. Yeah. <laughs> What was oh, it? we'll see. Okay, so yeah, let's he get to... He plays Snot in American Dad. Is okay. Snot? Uh, yeah, he plays Snot. How, what a reference, huh? Booger, Snot, man. But it's clearly Curtis Armstrong's voice, but his all-time... <laughs> Lamar was the best, though. His what all... <laughs> who's, the, who's the best? Lamar. Oh. He did the, like... I'm the man on the mic. I'm the Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that whole rap if I had to. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> hey. Cut it out. Uh, Curtis Armstrong's see? best role ever, Sorry though, was um, the drug, the, the drug-addled best friend on Better Off Dead with John uh, Cusack. Yes, yes. <laughs> see, and, and yeah, the roles that yeah we could go with that, and, and the damn dogs are half the reason why we're gonna have to make me edit or not edit. Well, you did bring up like TV shows that I forgot about because uh, you mentioned something right before I left that I was like, oh. Me? Well, it must have been. Well, we're talking about mustaches. <laughs> well, there there was that, but then some of the other ones that Tam mentioned off hair that I forgot there about that I said I was were like, like oh, yeah. Coach, and then oh, um, I watched Coach, coach but I wouldn't though, say I loved Coach. One. I think Coach Night was court. more of a filler. Night Court, oh, I loved. Night court. We didn't mention that one though. That was a good one. Fraser is on my list. Frasier was a good show, and we did talk about Cheers, and that's a bit of a weird kind of semi spinoff, but. Um, Night Court, I think, was one of those ones where if I couldn't sleep, I was able to catch on TV because my parents were asleep and they didn't hear it. Because that came on. Yeah, I mean, that was one of those late night. And so so was Cheers, though, too, for me. Like, I can remember it being on Channel 2 at, like, 11 o'clock or whatever. It was after the late night shows. I definitely had a nighttime routine (laughs) um, because I was a latchkey kid who pretty much raised myself. My nighttime routine was always whatever prime time was, and then from nine to ten was evening at the Improv on A and E, which was stand up comedy. Oh, nice! Uh, I wish I had then, found that. And then from ten to eleven was either Night Court or Married with Children, whatever was oh, on syndication. Okay. I get it. And then eleven, God, I can't remember. It might have been The Simpsons by then. No, probably not. All right. But I had I had a schedule every single night until about midnight when I fell asleep. Well, Weeknights you, versus night or weekends. I hated weekends because I did there was too, nothing on TV. Because yeah. I was a like I was kind of like you. I was a David Letterman late night TV because David Letterman was my favorite back in the day. <clears throat> and then you watched the others. I only after. ever watched Conan. He's the only talk Conan's show host oh, I've actually, ever watched. He, and Andy, is it Richter? Yep. Him, those duo, you can't beat. He's a good Twitter follower too. Ri- Andy well, Richter. Like those two, I love them. 
Those are the shows I would watch. Did you ever Howard's... watch the staring contest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the staring contest so much. <laughs> he and I, I think, I don't think Conan gets the credit that he should or deserves because I think he's one of the most versatile and like versatile. doesn't versatile. Yeah, what she said. Yeah. He said. <laughs> I'm more than for. I can't say beers. Seltzers. More seltzers. But I think he doesn't get what he deserves because he really is like, he doesn't have to like do certain, I mean, he does skits like they do, like whatever, but he just has a natural like. Oh, he's a genius. He Absolutely. He is. I think he's one of those long-term Johnny Carson type figures where in 40 more years, God willing, we're going to realize. Well, hopefully he gets some more time too, because I feel like. I mean, he's been on TNT and he's got his show there for they a bit. They fucked but him with the Tonight Show. Though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that whole did. Tonight Show bit just. But he did. But he took oh, that. Man. He took that he opportunity took to make like Conan, he, Conan yeah. abroad. Right. And he's doing something else now too. But Conan abroad was hilarious. Yeah, he's. <laughs> Plus, he like as long as he stays on TV, I think we'll be okay. He's never out of ideas, and he's yeah. always funny. So he's he's I still never don't gonna think go he away. Gets In the long term, deserves. that helped him because his stuff is like. Oh, and he got Tom Hanks yeah. firmly in his camp. Tom Hanks was leading the Coco charge. <laughs> absolutely, that. Tom Hanks is the biggest Coco fan there is. I didn't know that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, in that whole Tonight Show standoff, Tom Hanks came out and said, "Conan O'Brien's the best man for the job." Oh, I had no idea. And I think to this day, Tom Hanks will use the hashtag Team Coco. That's awesome. He is a huge fan. And right now, because what's Tom Hanks like? is a class act who has taste. Yeah. I love Tom. Yep. Marco, was there any like... He's our Turner and Hooch. <laughs> <laughs> was there any like family night shows like, you know... Do you remember rituals? his show? If you go time... Yes. I'm sorry, Tom Hanks. Oh my Hanks. God. Wait. Bosom Buddies? Yes! Bosom that, Buddies was classic. Oh my God. And Apparently, nope. <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> no. Oh my God. I'm getting scolded almost. I know. <laughs> Peter what was Scolari. the TV show where they couldn't afford? Was it Peter rent? Scolari so they had to rent out an apartment that was exclusive all, to women. And all women. So building. they had to dress like women. Him and his guy friend. Which I think is it a had fucking Donna, actor. I can't forget. Oh, I'm so I sorry. I don't Donna remember your name. But like they had to dress like women and portray as women, and then Tom Hanks obviously likes one of the, it's like white yeah, chicks. It was three in the company, movies, but, but better. <laughs> like, he's like, wait, I like this girl, but she thinks I'm a girl, but I want to fuck her. Yeah, oh, Sonny like was she's played the by Donna Dixon. Oh, Three's yeah, company. Yeah, yeah. Three's company. Yeah. Donna um, Dixon would be Garth Garth's dream ew. woman in Wayne's World. Okay. <laughs> she was Tom Hanks' <laughs> love interest in I love Bosom that Buddies. You know that because I'm like. What's that show? I'm 42. Of course I know that. Where you're the younger (laughs) sibling, where you remember certain things, but you're like, it's not. Dag. Yeah, (laughs) righty. Okay, back to the question. What was your family routine? Was there Um, one? Ours was Andy Griffith's show. Really? And Oh, he beats me. That's way older. The spinoff was the Gummer Pile show. Really? <laughs> so I can like make random references. Do you know heroes then? I see nothing. I hear nothing. Hogan's, Hogan's heroes. heroes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Every once in a while it. we'd watch Hogan's Heroes, but not really. I yeah. never watched Andy Griffith, but I did have to watch the return special Mayberry RFD. <laughs> but I know Gomer Pyle from it Me, also, Myself, and Irene. Yeah. <laughs> it also weirdly contextualizes like Ron Howard's like career because then he was on Happy, oh, Days, Happy Days, and then he this was also, is yeah. this is an Alzheimer's Arrested Development. Of course, I would put on my list. Just Not um, yeah. My friends and I make so many random Arrested Development Genius. joke references, Not like Jason Bateman kind of yeah. yeah. genius show. There's always money in the banana stand. Jason Bateman, I think, is one of the best actors ever. He's a great straight man. Yeah. Well, he you is think really he's good. comedy? He's just on point. I heard an interview with Jason Bateman for, uh, on Wait Wait Don't Tell Me by Peter Sagal and uh, NPR. One of the best interviewers in the world, by the way. Next to Conan O'Brien. <laughs> and, uh, he said, how did you, a child star, avoid the pitfalls that so many child stars fall into? You know, so many go to jail or have uh, drug addictions. Jason Bateman said, ah, you see pitfalls. I see opportunity. 
<laughs> so he's here he's here picking off the leftovers of that chick from different strokes dana plato and he's, oh, he's getting all these jobs he, because so gone. many child stars are jacked <laughs> <laughs> he but just has a cool Dodge head on his shoulders he just is so he, he does has, anything oh absolutely and he he's such a good straight man that anybody charlie day in Horrible Bosses. Oh, my God. Charlie Day is one of my all-time favorite guys. Philadelphia. Char- <laughs> yeah. Philadelphia. Oh, sorry. Always oh, sunny. sunny. Yeah, right. I thought you were going back to Tom Hanks, no, but no, that's no. not All funny. Su- <laughs> <laughs> not one bit. No. That <laughs> movie was a riot. <laughs> you watch it once, and you're like, that's good, but I won't as watch it As long as you hate them free. <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but that movie's a riot. No, Always Sunny is a great show. But Charlie Day specifically... Is one of my personal heroes. Because? Because. He, I don't know. Because I guess I've always been kind of self-conscious. But here he is with his voice. And, <laughs> and he's just fucking owning it. You know, I've always thought, oh, if only I had a better voice, I could do more stuff. But, you know, he's he's got the voice he's got. But he's one of the guys who made me realize that the world today is more about substance than presentation. So he, he's really a big influence on me. He's really a big yeah. idol of mine. I can get that. But Jason Bateman next to anybody is just gold. That guy is so funny. Well, before my dogs take over guys. the show, let's uh, kill this thing on some animation. Because you've mentioned The Simpsons a bunch. And I didn't want to, like, I didn't... I feel like animation is a whole nother like ballpark art in some aspects because it is art. And I never had an appreciation for animation, I think, until weirdly Archer. Yeah. Archer's I think Archer was the like one of the first times where I could watch full on cartoons as an adult and not feel weird or guilty or, or bad. Because peanuts I mean, fuck! I that the, the holidays were one of the things I looked forward to as a kid was because I got to watch Snoopy, you know, a, a yeah. Peanuts Thanksgiving, the holiday special, things like that. But outside of that, there wasn't much other animation aside from Garfield on Saturday mornings. Did I like or watch Tom and Jerry? Nope. They're gonna make a movie about that, and I was like, no. And my son was like, yeah. And I was like, but, but. No. It's barely sustainable as a four minute bit. Well, and that's, yeah. It's going to have to be like. A lot of the Warner Brothers stuff was never really all that kind of for me. It's going to have to be like. Whenever they. Lego level genius. Archer (laughs) happened. And it was like, oh, this isn't like your normal like sketch animation either. It wasn't like South Park animation either even though south park is great and it's adult humor and they're even colorado kind of boys i it was it was it was archer's just full-on direction humor maybe even the cast a little bit like it started it opened up a whole my animation door bob's burgers i love almost maybe a little bit more than archer now have you seen the crossover that's mm-hmm. the best for me. Yeah, I I got to watch it cuz I think who, you mentioned it before. Yeah, the guy who voices Archer is the same guy. H. John who Benjamin. Yes. Voices Bob and they did a crossover episode and it was great. He also does Arby's commercials and how greedy can you get, man? <laughs> right? You got the money. We got the money. You don't need the beef. You took the the words right out of my mouth. Uh, H. John Bob's Benjamin Burgers is, we do sleep to. Yeah. yeah, it's it's turning into like if it's on I'm going to flip to it. Just because, I mean, it, even if I have seen the episode, which I haven't at this point seen all of them, it's still funny. I like the whole crew. Eugene Merman. Oh, um, love Eugene Merman. I've always been a big fan of his stand-up. Shaw. Kristen Shaw, I've always said on other podcasts, but I've yep. said for years I would marry her right now sight unseen. <laughs> well, you've seen her, but yes. I've seen her. She hasn't seen me. <laughs> She is probably one of the funniest women I've ever seen in my life. And she's a local, too. She's from Longmont. Yeah. And I just absolutely love Kristen Shaw. It makes it hard not to love a show when you have a cast like that. and It, it definitely is turning into one of my favorite shows. And, and, I, and I think for me, 
it's all a personal ego thing, and I don't even know where it came from, but I had a hard time with liking cartoons as a kid or a teenager, and now here I am as an adult, and I'm like, some of my favorite TV shows are animation shows. <laughs> so, like, funky. a big one for me, Archer and I Bob's mentioned. Burgers. Yeah, Big Mouth is another one that I kind of like. I like John Mulaney is. Freaking hilarious! Oh, and Nick Kroll is a god I mean, among and men. Yeah, Nick Kroll, say, like the Nick two of them Kroll. together, like we watched Clone Wars. Speaking yeah, of- and Clone Wars was another one that I I, I knew was on Tam's list, but since we're kind of trying to cram everything yeah, all like in. Cartoons, Speaking of Nick Kroll, and it's not animation, but it may as well be. Does anyone remember the Geico Cavemen sitcom? I don't they remember made a, this they sitcom. Made, they no, made a sitcom. But I remember them doing it. They made a sitcom out of the Geico Caveman, and it was genius. It was so good, and it only lasted for a few episodes because everybody sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but it came and it went, and I loved it. And it was mocked because it was based on a, car- a commercial. And then Nick Kroll rose to prominence, and I was telling everyone I know. Yeah, I know he's a genius. He was in Cavemen, you dumb fuck. The show you didn't watch, yet judged anyway. <laughs> Nick Kroll played Nick, the caveman, and it was fucking awesome. Um, so yeah, I was an early adopter of Nick Kroll because of the podcast Comedy Bang Bang. He was a regular I on remember that. Comedy Bang Bang. Comedy Bang Bang. He was, Nick Kroll was a god on that show. And then it wasn't until the Nick Kroll show on like Comedy Central... The people started to figure out who he was. And like, I've known who he is. He was on that show you didn't give a chance. <laughs> That's actually really good. If you watch, it's on YouTube. You can find all the episodes on YouTube. And it's really, really good. That's funny, because I felt that way about Seth Green's Greg the Bunny. I oh, Greg don't the bunny. recall. Greg, Greg the, the bunny. bunny made it a season. Um, Might have been a season and a half. I'm not quite sure. It was yeah. on Fox. And Eugene uh, Levy was in it. I love Eugene Levy. Sarah Schitt's Silverman Creek. was Schitt's in Creek it. Creek is a great. I'm watching that right now again um, for like the third time. <laughs> so there, there was a few people he brought into it, and they had puppets, and some of his puppets and characters. I mean, it was it. I think it was. It wasn't his breakout show because he had Robot Chicken, but it was also kind of <laughs> like the live action side project for him, and and. It was good. It was it was good, but weirdly, I feel like it was somewhat ahead of its time. Fox gave him a try, but it didn't last very long. But it, but it to was his good credit, shit. he's he's made jokes as Chris on Family Guy. He's made jokes about Robot Chicken not being good enough for Fox, where him and Seth Fart- McFarlane as Peter will go back and forth <laughs> <laughs> about how Robot Chicken's not a good enough show. <laughs> there there are some really really funny moments on Fourth Family wall. Guy. Yeah, and Family Guy is one of those ones where I also love almost as much as Bob's Burgers. Like we, I turn yeah, that one I'll on too because there isn't much that Seth MacFarlane does that I don't like. So I, I think he's kind of. I was always he's one of those guys where man, if I hadn't had that foresight, God, I wish. Because I, I know, like Family Guy. I always have. I've just watched it through because I, I fell off for a long time, and then I got Hulu. Mm-hmm. Finally, and I, I watched back a whole bunch of, uh, I think up to the current. I think I'm now current on Family Guy, and it's still pretty good. But I was always more of an American Dad fan, oh. and that's the show I'm kind of working my way through now. But American Dad, for a long time, I would argue with anyone who would listen that it was the best show on TV at the moment. And I, I don't remember what season it was, but the plot structure is so complex the characters are so dynamic that I always was blown away. And now I think it's gotten back to a point where it has jumped the shark again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really tried, but I was a huge American Dad fan from the beginning. It's one of those shows where even though it's Seth, I see a lot of similarities. I feel like there are things he did with American Dad that he couldn't do with Family Guy. Yeah. And that's why it's there. Not that that's the whole reason or put anything bad on it that's how i see it i i've become more attached to the family guy characters i haven't given american dad enough time yet yeah I i'm really down to because like, i mean i i, I don't think it's yeah. one of those shows we seek out but if it's on we don't turn 
Yeah, because yeah. eventually Family Guy is going to be on after it. Right. <laughs> or, well, do you remember yeah. the episode of South Park where they attacked Family Guy? No. Because they were saying like Family Guy is stupid. The cutaways don't even ha- add to the plot. And I was watching that like, so the fuck what? It's still funny. <laughs> Because I hate it when people tell me that what I like is bad, because <laughs> obviously I like it. A lot of people did. That's why it is still on and 20 years later. But uh, South Park, I kind of fell off of. I don't know where I was going with this. I just remember, <laughs> I, I think I like Family Guy for being self-referential, but American Dad is way more plot-driven. Got it. It's more of a show show. It's way more. like, And I think if you're trying to be a writer for any of the Seth MacFarlane properties, then you've either got an American dad skill or you've got a family guy skill. I don't think they switch back and forth. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Futurama because a lot of this, ah. oh, yeah. again, when you're trying to figure out where exactly the Simpsons fell off, a lot of those guys went to Futurama. A lot of the original genius guys, I'm talking about the mathematicians from MIT and Harvard, mm-hmm. Those guys that made The Simpsons so amazing in the beginning kind of left for Futurama because even Matt Groening kind of seemed to see that The Simpsons was going to end sometime. He was wrong, unfortunately. It should have ended. But they spent three years creating Futurama before they actually launched it and took a lot of really, really talented people with them. So Futurama is hands down. I think it's my all-time favorite Desert Island pick if I was... Gonna be stranded with only one show. Wow! Give me the complete run of. Let's end it on that. Give me the if complete run be, of Futurama. Yeah, if, let's end it on that one then. So it's there you go. Futurama for me. Your desert island pick is Futurama. Shit. We'll go to Marco next, so yeah. Tammy has time to think. I know because uh, I honestly don't know. I'll have to go with Seinfeld just because it's a big catalog, and I can watch those episodes and rewatch them over and over again, and still find them funny like the jokes don't get old to me okay all right i i like that tam it's tough brendan go (laughs) top gear (laughs) oh really yeah i think so i'm torn between the 70s show and boston legal i was top gear or boston legal you gotta pick planes crashing desert island boston legal all right boston legal okay i like it I can predict 70 show more, maybe because I can watch it more. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of my thing with Seinfeld. <laughs> is like I love Seinfeld, but I can I can watch the episodes in my mind if I have to. I can about, even like, do the characters if yeah. I need yeah. to. Yeah, and the thing about the Boston Legal <laughs> that's is why it's the Desert Island show. Right. Well, the thing about Boston Legal is there's not a season or an episode where I want to skip it. Right. 70s that, oh, show. Yeah, this one. I would totally skip that full almost final mm-hmm. season. That's me. But anyway. Do you uh, got your little spinny bottle? Or? Yes, I do. All right. Oh, as soon as my, as my battery doesn't die. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, spin, spin the it before the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic will be chosen by, oh, no, me. Yay. Um, since there's no time to research, <laughs> my pick is hell. Oh. Hell. What is your version of hell? H E double hockey sticks. There's two versions. What Uh-oh. you're taught and what you think. Yeah. This could get deep. Let's talk about what you think oh. hell is. Whoa. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, I have Next week, mine too. we're going to hell. I'm going to hell. I'm there. 